People often ask, if God is good, why is there suffering in the world? They will say, a good and all-powerful God would not allow suffering in the world. Either God is all good, but not all powerful, and he sees the suffering in the world, but he can't stop it. Or God is all powerful and he's not a good, and he sees the suffering in the world and he does nothing about it because he doesn't really care. Or perhaps there's something else going on. A big question that we need to ask is why is there suffering in the world? What is it that causes suffering? And I would say that most of the suffering in the world is caused by humans. War, violence, robberies, reality TV, all of it is caused by humans. If God is going to stop all the suffering in the world, then God has to stop all the humans in the world from causing suffering. And if God's going to do that, then he has to stop us from having the choice to be able to choose good and bad. Sometimes I go to the ATM and I get some money out of the ATM. And when I finish my transaction, the ATM will say to me, have a nice day. And when the ATM says that, I don't say, oh, it's so nice. The ATM loves me. Thank you. I don't care about what the ATM has to say to me because the ATM is programmed to say that to me. Now, if the ATM was going to say, have a nice day, or get lost, you idiot, depending on what it thought of me, then I would care about what the ATM had to say. If God was to stop all the suffering in the world, then he would have to stop us from being able to choose to do bad things. It would mean that we would be pre-programmed to only do good things. That means our love and our kindness and our goodness would all be meaningless because we could not choose anything other than that. The only reason why love and kindness and goodness and all the good things that we do for each other have value is because we can choose to do the opposite. If we are forced to do it, then those good things mean nothing. So if God is all good and all powerful, he cannot also get rid of all suffering if, unless he is going to get rid of all human freedom. Ah, some of you are saying, but what about tsunamis? What about earthquakes? What about tornadoes? They are not caused by humans. And that is a good point. So for that, we'll need to look at the Bible. Romans chapter 8, verses 19 to 22 says this, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. What that is saying is that all of creation is broken. When humans chose to sin and to rebel against God, we didn't just break our relationship with God. And we didn't just break our relationship with each other. We also broke our relationship with the world. Sin is so huge that the effects of it ripple throughout the universe. And all of creation is now subject to frustration. And all of creation is now groaning as in the pains of childbirth, waiting for the time when God is going to come back in his son, Jesus Christ, and he is going to set everything right. But until that day, we see the groaning of creation in this broken world, in the tsunamis, in the, the bushfires, in the wild storms. We see the effects that sin has on the whole world. It is what humans have done that has caused creation to be like it is. But we know that one day God is going to set everything right. We, with creation, look forward to that day. Now, none of these thoughts mean anything if you are actually going through suffering. If you are in the middle of a painful time or if you are about to encounter something painful, it doesn't really matter about human free will or about this thought of the whole of creation groaning because you are in the middle of suffering and you want to know why am I suffering? Why is this happening to me? And I can't give you that answer. And the Bible doesn't answer that question, but it does say something about the character of God. When we suffer, our whole view of the world contracts to that suffering. 
Now, when I hurt myself, if I'm walking through my house in the middle of the night, trying to get from my bedroom to the bathroom, and I stub my toe, suddenly my whole world contracts to just my sore toe. Everything is about my sore toe. That is all I see. That is all I feel. And when we're in the middle of suffering, that can be all we see and all we feel. Everything is about the pain that we're going through. But we have a God who sees more, who knows more, who understands not only what we are going through, but also what we have gone through and also what is coming in the future. And the promise of the Bible is that all of it is going to be for our good if we trust in God. Romans 8, 28 to 30 says this. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What that passage is saying is that God is able to use everything for our good. Sometimes we read that passage and we say, ah, God uses all things for the good of those who love him. That means God will turn every bad thing good. So if my car breaks down, then I'll get a better one. If my boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with me, then I'll get a better one. But that's not what this is saying. This is saying that through the whole course of history, from before you existed to even the time after Jesus has come back and you are in glory with him, God is using all those things to conform you to the image of his son. He's using all those things to make us more like Jesus. That means that no bad thing is wasted. Everything is for our good. Everything is so that we can become the people that God wants us to be. When I was 12 years old, my parents adopted a baby with a disability and with a hole in her heart. This meant that the oxygenated blood was mixing with the unoxygenated blood and she wasn't getting the oxygen that she needed throughout her body. Well, after a few months of being with my family, my parents took her to the hospital where the surgeons did surgery on her, cutting her open and cutting into her heart and putting a piece of fabric over the hole in her heart so then the muscle of the heart could grow onto the fabric and create a new wall. She is now a strong and healthy young woman. Now, if you saw that and you didn't understand what was happening, you would think that my parents were monsters. Here were some people who found themselves a young, disabled child, and they took this child to their home. And then, after a few months, they handed her over to a bunch of strange men who then stabbed at her with sharp knives and played around with her heart. You would say, they're monsters. You should get her away from that. Don't let them do that to her. It's only when you see the bigger picture that you see that everything my sister went through was for her good so that she would be able to live the life that she was made to live. The truth is that God is not interested in giving us easy lives. He is interested in giving us new hearts. And he will use everything that we go through to make us more like Jesus. The last thing I want to say about suffering is this. The Bible doesn't give us all the answers. I don't know why you are going through the things you are going through. I don't know why you've gone through the things that you have been through. And I don't know why the things that are painful in your future are going to happen. We don't have all those answers. But what the Bible does tell us is that God is not a God who is indifferent to our suffering. In the story of the Bible, we see that God has come to us as a man in his son, Jesus Christ. And in Jesus, God lived with us. God loved us. God taught us. God showed us how to live. And also he died for us so that we would be set free from our sin and that we will be able to live a new life with him. Now, if God loves us so much that he is willing to die for us, to suffer for us, to live this life of suffering with us, then we can know that whatever we go through, God is not a stranger to suffering. And by God's Holy Spirit who lives in us, if we trust in him, then we know that God is not only one who has suffered for us, but he is with us in the midst of our suffering. We don't always understand why there is suffering in the world. But what we do know is that we have a God who has suffered with us and he has suffered for us. And he loves us so much that he will not let anything go to waste. The question is, when you encounter suffering, what are you going to do? 
Will you run to the God who has loved you so much that he was willing to die for you? And who will be with you through anything that you go through? Or will you run from him and have to deal with all the pain in this world by yourself? So there you go, guys. There's my response to the question of if God is good, why is there suffering in the world? If you have a question that you would like to ask, put it in the comments below and I will do my best to give you a response. If you want to find out more about me, I don't know why you would. If you want to listen to my sermons or read my blog posts or book me to speak, then you can go to tomfrench.com.au and you'll find everything there. And then you can quickly go back to a better and more interesting website.